Our first guest tonight started acting when uh, he was still learning to tie his shoes. Now he's a graduate of Pretend TV Medical School in a sixth season of The Good Doctor. You can watch it Monday nights here on ABC. Please welcome Freddie Highmore. <laughs> Be here, and I'm going to tell the audience a little something about you because uh -oh. you're very polite, you're very <laughs> friendly. And before on Friday, you knew you were coming here on Monday, mm -hmm. you sent me a nice little email saying, Hey, I'm looking forward to seeing you on Friday. And no one's ever really looking forward to seeing me, <laughs> so I appreciated that. I do look forward to seeing you. I also just look forward to the backstage. It's oh. the best setup back there. I mean, oh. it's lovely Did to see. Did you send the backstage an email too? Or was <laughs> I sent them several. <laughs> um, <laughs> No, I mean, you've got the bar set up. I mean, right. I've done other shows where it's definitely been more challenging back there. Yeah, um, where it's not as, yeah, some of them are, it's like, um, it's like being um, like a, a prison at an amusement park sometimes, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you responded, for example, to my email, which was very lovely of you, but other people, some hosts don't even want to interact Is with, that right? with the guests oh, before they please, come out. Oh, please, let, tell <laughs> me more. <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm really just like revealing <laughs> too much. What happened? What'd they do to you? Show me There's on your body. <laughs> <laughs> the bruises have now gone. <laughs> um, there was, I'm gonna avoid trying to, uh, trying to avoid saying the name. Oh, okay. This host doesn't like seeing guests beforehand. And so I was coming backstage with a couple of the producers and they looked up and they saw the host at the end of the corridor and they were really, really scared. And they grabbed me and threw me into the next door that was right there by the hallway. And it was a broom closet, a dark broom closet. And I was there for about a minute. And it, they were like these sort of secret service agents on their phone, like, I'm always, are we clear, are we clear? Are they, have they gone, have they gone? Can we, can we bring them out? Terrified. You were stuck um, into a closet? And then just walked out as if nothing happened. <laughs> um, so. So this is a, a much more pleasant way of spending oh, my good. evening. Oh, well, yeah, we well, should be in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> Holy Thank cow. you for being a decent human wow. being. Wow. <laughs> Kathy Lee Gifford did that to you? <laughs> Close. <laughs> that's terrible. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, that's, yeah, that's really weird. <laughs> and then you didn't mention it when you came out on the show? I'm not sure if they knew. Oh, Maybe yeah, they... right. The host might not have even known. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't said to this person. I did. I thought it was not a good moment. It was probably to say, nice to see you. I was just put in a broom closet. Yeah, I mean, my initial inclination was to let the host off the hook. But if everyone's that scared, <laughs> probably There's something that going host's on. fault. Yeah, yeah. All right. Oh well, boy. Well, let people figure it out. They're going to be now going through your IMDb and seeing which shows you did. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you shoot The Good Doctor up in Vancouver, yes. where a lot of TV shows are, uh -huh. are shot. Is there like a TV show actor community up there that you're a part of? We have a lovely group on the show. On your show. Um, yeah. I guess we're there for nine months of the year. I feel like I don't see that many people. Because you're up there working the <laughs> whole time. Just up there working and just moved out this, uh, yeah, this last weekend. Where do you move to? You go back to England? So I go back to England and we never quite know at the end of the show if you're coming back for another season. And right. so I moved all of my stuff into storage. Is which... that something you do every single end of every season? Most seasons I have. Really? Um, and most seasons I make the mistake of not getting someone to help me. And I just try and do it all on my own. Is that true? I'm not a moving man, Jimmy. <laughs> I'm, I don't have the truck. I've got like a little rental car. I don't even have one of those wheelie things to put the boxes on. So I just take them down one by one and put them into the car and then head back up. It takes me all day. Every it, nine months you do this? After I sent you the email, I just did that. For, Is that really what you did? For a full weekend. Yeah. Why isn't anyone around to help you? <laughs> I guess Why, I what should are you just moving? Ask. What's the biggest thing you're moving? Well, the biggest one this time, the issue was the exercise bike. Because okay. this was a new purchase this season uh -huh. and it didn't fit in my car and it's too heavy to just carry. Yeah, right. So I had to wheel it through the streets of Vancouver to get to my storage locker. <laughs> you wheeled a stationary bike? <laughs> well, you know, it's got like, there's, there's two wheels on one side so you can like lift it up. But yeah. it's heavy, so you can't lift the whole thing. So I got it down outside the apartment, 
and then it was raining and I hadn't detached the screen. So I took my coat off and like covered the screen up to protect it. And people are looking like, what is this guy doing? You know, is he stealing? Is he, is he trying to pretend that it's not a bike and it's like another human that's just coming along for the ride? Um, and so I keep on going, I get halfway across the first crossing and there's this huge snap and one of the wheels has come off. And I look up and it's just rolling away into the gutter. So now I'm down to just scraping one of the wheels and like sort of wobbling around. And someone stops me finally and is like, are you okay? What's happened to you? And I said, oh no, being very British, talk about the weather. It's just raining, it's not too bad. Um, I do this all the time, it's part of the exercise, I enjoy it. Um, it's, it's just, you know, really does it for me. And they said, oh, okay. Um, I do like your show, so maybe you should just stick to that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said, thank you. And I thought that was the end of it. And then she came back very kindly and very honestly and said, well, it's not actually me who watches the show. It's my boyfriend, and he watches it every night to fall asleep. <laughs> so I guess it's good for the ratings as long as people tune in. Well, the TV's um, on. Yeah, that's it. Oh, but... matter, really. <laughs> But that is, you know, that's a great tip for people, I think, especially when you're in a, uh, you're in peril is what you were in when your <laughs> exercise bike is going one way and the other way. There's no need to be so honest. It's like, I watched the show and then leaving is just great. It would have no been need nice. to double yeah. back and explain. Just want you to know, I don't watch the show. <laughs> My husband watches it, <laughs> and it knocks him out cold. Exactly. <laughs> I just said thank you, you know. Speaking of, oh, speaking of husband, mm -hmm. the last time you were here, you'd just been married. Yes. And I remember you telling me you felt weird saying my wife, yes, right? Yes, it is a little odd still. Are you, still, are you over that now? It's just that I get, I'm used to the ring. You okay. know, I don't really play around with it as yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, right. At the start, yeah. you're constantly fiddling it. And, yeah. Um, Fiddling, yeah, that sounds okay. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, my wife, it's still, still a little odd. It's odd. Is it odd for her to say my husband? No, I think she's just got used to it. She got than used me. to it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can you come up with something else? Like, you know, well, you can't say like my lady friend. That's not. Um... <laughs> My lady friend. <laughs> my lady friend. <laughs> my my exercise partner bike sometimes partner, people say, yeah. but then it feels like you're in business together. Exactly. If uh -huh. you've got any other ideas, then I, you know, I'm all ears. Maybe just use her name. That's probably <laughs> the best way to go. <laughs> this is, yes. <laughs> and then shove her into a closet in case you get really... <laughs> Freddie Highmore is with us. This show, The Good Doctor, is Monday night. 10 o'clock here on ABC. We'll be right back. He doesn't want his tumor removed, so I don't know what there is to discuss. Given the tumor's impact on his frontal lobes, he might not be competent to make that decision. You don't think I'm competent to be a doctor, so... Oh, no, just to be a neurosurgeon. The surgery should give Kurt about 20 more years. So let's recap. 20 more years as a bad father versus one year as a good father. There is no medical justification. Yes, there is, Sean. Yes, there is. There's an emotional one. There's an emotional issue. Your voice is getting louder and your face is flushed. Are you upset? That is Freddie Highmore and the good doctor. <laughs> Freddie, you've been doing the show. I was thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Now, typically, medical school is like four years, and then you have, like, I don't know, between three and however many years of residency. Yeah. So you're almost like a doctor now after six seasons, right? I, sh I should be. You yes, should yeah, be. I'll say yes, yeah. I wanted to test that. Uh, <laughs> do, you, like, do you think if somebody was uh, needed, uh, let's say, CPR, could you... Mm -hmm administer that properly. I know what it is. Oh. Yeah. Um, I've never tried, so I, I guess it's You know how much pressure there is. Like, if you were to save a to life, find out. it would be fantastic. But if you were to watch someone die because you couldn't do the mm -hmm. simple night the fever simple. or staying alive thing, yeah. Staying alive, that's the one. You'd be yeah. mocked for the whole rest of your life. But um, <laughs> what we have here are some medical instruments, oh, and good. I'm wondering, if you can, now this one is pretty obvious. You know what this is, right? Yeah, that's the stethoscope. That is a yep. stethoscope, correct. Oh. Is it gonna get progressively more difficult? You know what these are? These scissors? Well, oh, look here, here you can hold it. You see what that is? They're kind of blunt scissors. It things. starts with an H. I don't know what that is. <laughs> So we, don't, we, don't, we don't do this one. You really are a doctor. You don't use it. <laughs> I think maybe it's a different one in the UK. That's we a, have a different medical that's system. That's a hemostat, that Hemostat. One. Oh, excellent. Does that yeah. sound familiar now uh, or no? No, but Not I'll, at all. I'll, 
I'll okay. take it back and try and use it next season. <laughs> now, this doesn't necessarily have like a particular name, but do you know what this, the, you do with this? Yes, I do know that one. What's that one? You, um, you shove it into the chest and then you crank it open to, to, do... to get digging your tools in. Like your hem <laughs> so make room for your hemostats. You know the, what? The spreader. That's the exactly spreader. right, a rib spreader. <laughs> Do you know this? That looks like... Some people clearly know what it is. Mm -hmm. It looks like a kind of kitchen tool for, like, making bread or... Um, mm -hmm. You could use it in the kitchen, Or a, a gun. I mean, obviously, it looks somewhat threatening when you point it towards me like yeah, that. Yeah, no, this but, um, <laughs> but... This is a caulking gun. This has no medical use whatsoever. I mean, I guess it could have some weird medical use. But no, this is for, like, um, if your bathtub is leaking. All oh, right. good. Okay. Jeez, I don't even know what... Okay, let's what see you what got this down one there? is. Um, that's for the ears, to inspect the ears. Or the Do you nose. know what it's called? O otoscope? That's exactly right! Oh. <laughs> you seem genuinely surprised that I got that oh, one right. Listen, if you didn't get hemostat, I had no hope for otoscope. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> That's the bone scraper. <laughs> Close enough. And finally, let me get one more. Oh, okay. Do you know what this is? And do you know what this is for? I don't know. I, it seems like something you do in your own time. Um, <laughs> Yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're, uh, you're not wrong. <laughs> is it, is it, uh, is it to share? <laughs> no, it's not for sexual, um, it's not, no, it's not sexual, no. I mean, I, no, it's not really sexual. I'm, I'm still newly married, so we haven't <laughs> needed to, well, to get into nice the exotic stuff. I have a for your stuff. wife. <laughs> This is called an orchidometer, and what this is, this is so doctors can put a numerical, assign a numerical size oh. to the human testicles. Oh, good. So, yeah, vaguely coupley. So what a doctor would do is give a little squeeze and then squeeze over here to figure uh -huh. out if you're a, a 15 or a 20 <laughs> or, by God, maybe even a 25. <laughs> <laughs> Please, is, give these to your wife. This is great. My, my I will... <laughs> These are fantastic. Well, I'll, I think I'll, we'll... I'll return with some news next time. I think what we... <laughs> I feel like what we've learned is that television is pretend, right? <laughs> the good doctor, he's not really a doctor, everybody. If you are in need of medical help, do not call Freddie Highmore. <laughs> but watch his show Monday nights, 10 o'clock here on ABC. Thank you, Freddie. Great to have you here. We're back with Amanda Peet. <laughs>